Welcome to another Photoshop tutorial from tutorvid.com. There was a recent post on the photo forum asking about this photo here, asking how to remove the table and this date in the bottom corner. First thing I do is duplicate the background layer in case I make mistakes. I'll still always have the background to refer to. So I press Control J and now you see we have layer one on top of the background. So first thing, I'll try to get rid of this table and I'll start over here beside the people and I'll zoom in here pressing control and spacebar I can zoom and draw my zooming square press the spacebar to move around the image hold it down and you can drag and drop so to get rid of this black here I'll use the clone tool which is over here or the S key and pressing the alt I select my starting point and then let go and click and it'll clone from underneath there Okay, that's not perfect, but it's getting better. You can see here there's a uh, goes from dark to light. So to smooth this out, I'm going to change the clone tool to 50% opacity and then clone from up here and go over that merging area and then clone from down here and go back up a bit so we can sort of smooth this out. Now you can see it's a little smoother. All right, that's sufficient for now. Another hard area is right where her hair merges into the chair. Because there's such similar color, I can't use any fancy tools that isolate the hair. So I'll have to do this manually. If we uh, use a pretty soft brush, we should be able to get it looking all right. Another trick you can do is on the edges here, the hair ends up being very fine at the end. And here it is sort of cut off at a blunt end because I cloned there. So what I do there is grab some hair that still has the fine end texture and then clone bit over here. And then you can have it looking like it is ending. Same for over here, it sort of ends, so I can grab some hair from up there and clone a little down here. So now we have the table more or less isolated from the people, and now we just have to remove it. The first thing I'll try is just brushing. Uh, so I'll select the brush tool with the B button or you can get it over here. And if I want to paint this color of wall, seeing as it's all one texture, I don't have to use the clone tool. I'll press the Alt key and click, and that'll select the color of this wall right here. So then I can just brush all of this out. And now the reason this isn't going to look perfectly like the wall is because the wall has slight variation in the texture and the colors. So I'll have to fix that later. And I'm going to make the brush a little bigger, but I'll select the new color now and paint here. You can see the wall. It's two different colors, but I'll deal with that later. Uh, select a new color for this farther back wall. I'm using a Wacom tablet pen, which is why I can brush with a small size, even though my brush size is quite large. Now I'm going to fix up this border here. I'm going to draw using the selection tool. I'm going to do polygon selection. I'm going to draw one line up here and then draw another line down here, and that'll clean up my edge a fair bit. I'm going to soften the selection feather by 3 pixels. And now, using the color from up here, I'm just going to paint right up towards that selection and it'll create a nice hard border. Now what we have to do is merge these three colors into a smooth gradient. Perhaps one thing I'll try now is uh, I'll use the this here polygon tool again to create my selection. Now I'm going to use the gradient tool. The gradient is over here or press the G button. Now the gradient goes from the foreground to the background. I've selected that here and then you can also choose what type of gradient. The foreground to background color is this first one here. And I want the foreground to be this color and then I'll click these and select the background color is going to be this. So now when I draw my gradient, it's going to go from this color to this color over the length of the gradient I draw. So if I draw from here all the way over here, when you get a smooth gradient, you can see that the wall changes colors actually mostly here. So I'm going to draw a shorter gradient from here to here. And that matches up a fair bit better, maybe a little longer. We'll see how that looks. It's reasonably close. It could have been a little darker, but I can deal with that. 
So I'm going to use the clone tool again. I'm going to clone from up here, brush down here. Another really good tool for things like this is actually the patch tool. Click and hold down and go down to the patch tool. And this one, you can select a large area like this. And that's the source. When I drag it over here, then it's going to replace the colors where I originally selected with sort of the gradient and colors of my destination here. And it smooths everything out and blends it to the pixels around the selection. So it's a pretty easy way to blend things or even take away errors. Like if I wanted to remove this text in this image here, I can just select it, have this sort of shading, and it replaces it and blends everything together. So it works really well for fixes on image. Right now you can see there's a line here. So I'll grab that there and blends it out a fair bit. I'll maybe make a little bigger edit. That looks better. Uh, you can see this, this maybe here should be a bit darker. I'm going to try using the brush now. I'll select the color with the alt and click again over here and paint at 30% to do just some soft editing. I'm going to select the darker color so I can blend it into that edge a bit more. 10% brush. You can quickly select the opacity of the brush by pressing the 1 key. That gives 10% or 5 is 50%. Or if you want uh, something in the middle, 15, you can press 1, 5 quickly and it'll give you 15. Now under this picture, I think I have to fix a little bit more. I'm going to brush right up to it. Zoom out. I'm zooming out and in with control plus and minus keys. All right, now right by her hair, it still needs a little work. I'll maybe use the patch tool again here. Although when you're butting up against uh, like the hair, it might blend in a darker color. But we can give it a try. Now that worked pretty good. I'll do that over here as well. Now one problem with all this brushing I've done is on the rest of the wall, you can see there's a grain, uh, there's pixelation because it was such a small thumb. On general images, you still have the grain even if you don't have the pixelation. So to make just general brushing, look like the rest of the image, you have to add green. So I'm going to select the area that I did my editing in. And I'm going to feather the outside by 10 pixels. And actually I'm going to copy this onto a new layer. I'm going to press Control J and that'll duplicate just the selection. You can see it in the bottom. And I'm going to add filter, noise, add noise. And the amount, uh, you're not going to need very much, maybe 1%. That looks like a little bit too much for such a small image. 0.1 maybe. 0.2 makes it look, you can use the space bar and drag around the image. But you can see that this bottom here, the pixelation and noise matches pretty well to the top now. So I'll leave it at 2%. Gaussian blur, or Gaussian noise and monochromatic. So it's looking pretty good. I could probably smooth out this here color a little bit more. I'll work on that. The way I do that is I'll use a 10% brush opacity and select one of these middle shades. Alt click and brush a little bit. You can look at the before and after. Hide these two layers. Oops, and I took away that text, it's still gone. To bring back that text, I'll create a layer mask here. And I'm going to brush black on this layer mask. A layer mask hides this part of the layer, so it shows through to the bottom layer. And that's looking pretty good. I'll maybe do a couple edits to this picture. I'll bring up the highlights. You can see here on the histogram that there isn't much for highlights. So I'll drag the highlight up a little bit without trying not to blow out the image. And blacks, there's no blacks either. So I'll bring this end of the curves down. And here there's a lot of information. So I'll see what I can maybe bring that up a little bit. And I'll create maybe a little more contrast in that area. And get some rich dark blacks there. And I think there we have it. There's the after and the before.